Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we're going to be looking at the jQuery Now utility, which is going to provide us with a timestamp in milliseconds um, that represents a time. Now, we're first of all going to demonstrate uh, how to do this, and then, then I'm going to talk very shortly about why you might want to do this, and also the other functionality that uh, the time uh, in jQuery provides. Uh, such as time between animations, uh, etc. So the first thing I want to go ahead and do is just create a div on my page that's going to hold this value. And then first of all, going to look about uh, look at returning the static value, so the current value, and then we're going to set an interval and see this uh, value rise uh, extremely quickly, obviously with the milliseconds, and then you'll see it progress uh, with the second part of it. So we're just going to call this div time. Uh, inside util.js, uh, which we've included on our page just here, uh, obviously as well as jQuery, uh, we're going to go ahead and place the time inside of this div. So this is what our browser looks like at the moment. Let's just refresh. Uh, you can see that there's nothing on the page, obviously. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wait for the document to be ready. So when the DOM is fully loaded, and inside of here we want to go ahead and create a variable with the uh, the current time. So I'm going to create a variable called timestamp and that's going to be equal to, and this is where the uh, function functionality of this utility comes in, it's jQuery dot uh, now. So it's you, we would do jQuery dot now. And this will return uh, the timestamp uh, with the exact milliseconds as well. So it's quite useful I guess in a way. Um, because we're looking at a very precise, um, a precise language or or a precise action based on different, um, you know, things that jQuery provides, like animation. These animations can, uh, you know, speed up very quickly. So instead of returning a timestamp with, uh, you know, as you would normally see in languages like PHP, with just the uh, seconds at the start, we also have milliseconds because we can use this uh, with animation. So now what I want to go ahead and do is uh, actually place this into the time uh, div. So I'm going to say time.text and then just replace that with the time stamp. So now when we refresh our page you see we get a timestamp which is slightly longer looking than other timestamps. Uh, and you see when we refresh this the value goes up quite quickly. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and set an interval on this so we can see this rise quite quickly. Uh, well you know more dynamically uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and set an interval uh, let's just bring this down a bit and inside here uh, obviously we run uh, our callback function and we'll just go ahead and cut that and paste it inside this set interval um, functionality now the second parameter is the uh, you know every time you want this interval to be uh, or the block to be executed and that's every one millisecond so now when we refresh you can see the value should rise. No, it's not. So let's see what we've done wrong. Oh yeah, there we go. Because we've uh, we're just placing the uh, timestamp in there. So let's just go ahead and place that declaration of that variable inside the interval, uh, and then this will refresh every one millisecond. So when we refresh, you can see that the value rises. Now you can see here that this value uh, that my cursor is over just now uh, is the amount of seconds, whereas these are the milliseconds, uh, the three digits that then count up to each second, because uh, obviously there are a thousand milliseconds in a second. Uh, so you can see now that we have uh, a representation of milliseconds, uh, and then we've got the seconds here, and then so on. So the reason that we have this uh, jQuery.now, which we can apply to lots of different things and lots of different areas, uh, this obviously just returns the timestamp. Uh, however, you can do things like um, check how long it takes for an animation to complete, or you know check the time uh, that a sp certain process is carried out. Uh, and this is important for obviously accuracy. Uh, so while we've just been uh, looking at jQuery now, which returns a timestamp, uh, you can you know use this with uh, different elements and loading times as well, just to check pay, uh, you know times that things happen, like animations or when elements are loaded into the DOM. So the other use for this would be to pass this to um, a a uh, another script, for example. Uh, so let's say you have retrieved the time that a specific animation or a specific load time takes place. 
uh, you could then go ahead and store this uh, inside of a database table for example let's just take the scenario that you're loading an iframe with uh, a page inside uh, so a web page inside the iframe. You could count how long this takes for that particular page to load uh, and then store that. Maybe you want to tell your users how long uh, the last page load time of, of, their, of this page that they're viewing is loaded. So there's a variety of ways we can use timestamps uh, but for now that's just how to display a timestamp to the screen uh, and we've also created an interval so we've made the uh, representation of it a bit more dynamic.